evil mother-in-law convinced my fiance to leave me, then she made it worse. You know, we've seen many tall tales of evil mother-in-laws on this podcast. There are no shortage of them, uh, I can assure you. And today I needed to be reinforced by our incredible producer, Big Riley. <laughs> Big protein. Hello, hello, hello. Riley, are you ready to dive into the depths of evil mother-in-laws? Let's get into this wacky story. Let's do it. I could finally air my uncensored frustration about the night my engagement was single-handedly corrupted by my entitled mother-in-law. So my girlfriend and I were really engaged to be engaged. <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> we both agreed and we wanted to get married, but I hadn't done the formal proposal yet because we wanted to meet each other's families first. Neither lived nearby. I always thought the old trope about meeting the in-laws being a big fiasco was a myth. My man clearly hasn't watched OKOP. OK <laughs> Both because I was younger and more naive then, and because I'm lucky to have easy parents. My girlfriend met them for a few hours. Once we were alone, just me and them, I told them my intentions, and my mom asked, does she have kids already? And my dad asked, does she have a good solid job? And they both asked, do you really love her? And that was that. I had their full support for the marriage. Damn, is that support? <laughs> Is he being sarcastic? <laughs> three questions. All you need for their support is these three questions. I thought meeting her parents would be the same. Some grilling was to be expected, but as long as I was honest and respectful, it would all be fine. Relevant fact, they had my girlfriend when they were teenagers. By surprise, so now they have a do-over daughter. Ooh, Ooh, their words, not mine, who is just oh. six years old. Yikes. <laughs> they said that. My girlfriend and I made the trip to the city and I met them for the first time over dinner at a steakhouse. It was pretty upscale and we had scheduled the dinner for 8 p.m. So I was surprised to see that they had brought the kid along with them. I met everyone at once and the initial awkwardness settled down once we had sat down. We were making great small talk when the six-year-old said she was thirsty. No big deal. When all of a sudden, mother-in-law starts screaming, water, water, water. <laughs> a waiter came rushing to see what the commotion was. And without <laughs> even making eye contact with the poor guy, mother-in-law went, we've been waiting here forever and no one's even gotten us any water. My daughter's been asking. <laughs> we had been sitting for about 15 or 20 minutes without service, which that's a <sighs> long time. Without Dude, you any can, water. You can handle that so much better though. Like... That's true. It's true. You can Come handle on. so much better, but that's pretty bad. But they were visibly behind and there were no circumstances that would have warranted that shouting. Yeah, there's there's never a reason to shout yeah. unless they're attacking you. Unless like the daughter's a fish and they need water to survive. <laughs> yeah. I should have realized from how unfazed everyone else was at the table that I should be bracing myself for a long night. But I couldn't imagine what was to come at that point. The waiter Gosh. rushed over with the water and apologized for the delay, explaining a few very large parties had all arrived at once. The guy seemed sincere and quite affable, so I thought the water would just be an anomaly in an otherwise pleasant night. But then, mother-in-law kicked into full gear. We'll need a kid's menu, she informed the waiter. He said that they didn't have a kid's menu, but the chef could simplify most dishes. What do you mean you don't have a kid's menu? Ellen replied in total disbelief, as though he'd said they didn't have a fire exit. He explained they didn't get too many child visitors and there were plain enough foods on the menu that no separate menu ever be necessary. Mother-in-law sighed dramatically and waved him away. Literally, without saying a word, waved him from the table. Okay, so this is a really nice restaurant. Oh, yeah, yeah, like Ruth's Chris or something like that. I tried to give him an apologetic glance, but understandably, he didn't look back our way. I was so glad the poor guy left and didn't have to be subjected to her anymore. Meanwhile, she turned her attention on me, and I almost wished he'd come back. At least he was getting paid to be here. Oh, man, <laughs> this is not setting it up well. She was like, so you're a screenwriter? And I explained, well, yes and no. I want to be, but it's hard to get a job in that field that you can support yourself on. So I'm working at a nonprofit right now. There is a screenwriting component on the job though. So I'm really happy there. So like his job is a in the creative field. Work at a bank and make a million dollars. Like what, what are you doing? Having dreams? Disgusting. My daughter needs money. Ellen turned to her six year old and went, hear that hun? You want to make sure to snag a man who works for profit. Learn from this it's not too late for you no what <laughs> to the six-year-old teaching him young 
Teach them young. Dude, teach them young. The do-over daughter. I couldn't tell if she was trying to be funny or not, so I just let it pass, looking over to my girlfriend to see if she was even considering speaking up on my behalf. Nope. The waiter came back, visibly nervous. That hurt because he was so relaxed and personable at the start of the meal. He asked if we'd like to hear the specials before we ordered, and Entitled Mother said, sure, here's how that went. Waiter, first we have a lightly seared strip steak. Entitled Mother, next. Waiter, oh, uh, okay. And then we have a broiled leg of grass fat. Next, uh, we have a pasta prime vera mixed with next and on and on until he'd gone through all seven or 10 specials. Even though she ultimately ordered off the menu, a plain ribeye, well done. God, she tried to order her daughter the same, but the kid said she wanted plain mashed potatoes. So mother-in-law let her get mashed potatoes alone for dinner. Then she sent the waiter away. The rest of us hadn't even ordered yet and everyone else just sat there like it was entirely normal. I waited for someone to say something, thinking it was more her older daughter, my girlfriend's place or her husband's. But when no one did, I couldn't help myself. I, uh, was that one steak and potatoes gonna be for all of us or? My girlfriend explained in the tone that you'd use for a tourist violating a sacred local taboo. My mom always has to order, put the kids food in first so we can get started right away. We'll order once the kitchen has hers. That is so dumb. What the heck? Mama gotta eat. I thought she was joking. Since mother-in-law didn't just order her kids food, she also ordered her own dinner too. So I laughed. Something funny? Mother-in-law asked. Then I realized she was serious and I shut up. Thankfully, her dad at least recognized what was normal for them might not be regular to me and tried to lighten the mood with a change of topic. But even 10 minutes after we ordered, I guess technically five minutes after we'd ordered, 10 minutes after she and her daughter had gotten food, mother-in-law started again. Another table that had been there long before we were got a side of mashed potatoes with their meal. Oh no. Mm. Oh no, I know exactly, but I see you in the comments if you know what's about to go down. Mother-in-law threw a total fit of rage. She was sputtering so inaudibly that none of us could figure out what was wrong at first. Finally, she managed to flag down some busboy who barely spoke English and began laying into him like he just swiped her on the freeway. He kept trying to explain he wasn't a server and he could get one, but she wouldn't stop to breathe long enough for him to find someone who could actually help. <laughs> Wow. All the while, I kept looking at my girlfriend for signs of embarrassment or at the very least irritation. But you wouldn't have known if she was even hearing any of this. Our waiter came over, somehow still feigning a smile despite knowing what he was walking into. And mother-in-law actually goes, why did that table get mashed potatoes and ours hasn't come yet? Go to that table, take the mashed potatoes out of their mouths, out of their throats, out of their stomachs, and feed it to my daughter like a baby bird. The waiter kindly and concisely explained, well, ma'am, those people ordered potatoes before your party had placed their order. Mother-in-law looks this man dead in the eye, finally, and says, well, it doesn't matter when they ordered it. My daughter is the youngest one here. Her food should come first. You could tell the waiter was working hard to restrain himself at this point. He explained it was a first come, first serve policy and age didn't help one way or the other. He offered to go check on the potatoes. Mother-in-law agreed, or more specifically, she said, uh, yeah, you better. But I was clocking him and he went right back to his server station because we had only just ordered a few minutes ago. Three or five minutes passed, during which we could have no other discussion at the table except for how awful this restaurant was, how hungry the poor baby was, who hadn't said a word about being hungry this whole time and was contently playing her loud iPad game without headphones, disturbing <laughs> all the diners around us. I would hate that so much. That would drive me insane and how America has lost all respect for motherhood because it's just a me, me, me culture now. Wow, she really looked in a mirror on that one. <laughs> right? I chimed in. I'm with you on that last part. <laughs> and to my utter shock, instead of laughing at my joke, my girlfriend seemed annoyed with me. So after a few minutes, the waiter comes back and says the potatoes will be out very soon. Mother-in-law then goes and does something again I thought was just a myth. She took three singles and a five out of her wallet and put them on the table in full view of the waiter. Then she took one single away and said, every table I see getting potatoes before us is a bill gone. Oh no. 
So her her tip for a dinner of five at a upscale steakhouse is eight dollars. <laughs> at that point, I'm like, I would bring potatoes to every single seat, every single table around theirs. I'd be like, oh, sorry, we're just like totally backed up right now. We just can't we just can't get these potatoes out. It's so crazy. I was absolutely mortified. The waiter, to his unending credit, just took a deep breath and said, I don't have control over the order in which the kitchen fires tickets, but I can tell you it should be out at any minute. And left without saying anything disparaging. I had been holding my tongue all night as well, in the name of my relationship. But once the tip hit the table, the $8 tip for a 100 plus bill on top of everything else, I figured if my girlfriend was half the woman I thought she was, then she wouldn't care if I spoke my mind at this point. If anything, she'd be supportive, right? Right, Riley? You would you would think. So I scooted my chair back a bit and said, listen, I know what you're doing with the cash on the table, but that kind of thing makes me really uncomfortable and it's just not called for. Please put the money away or we can just continue this some other time. He spoke. He spoke. My girlfriend's dad spits back. What? How cheap do you have to be to not believe in tipping the service workers? Before I could process he was serious or yanking my chain, mother-in-law shocked with me, no. You know what? You're right. This isn't necessary. I should have known better than to be relieved. She folded the bills back into her wallet, patiently waited for the next plate of mashed potatoes to be carried out. And when it wasn't delivered to us, it was a very common side dish at this place, a steakhouse. She went right up to the stranger's table and picked it up off the table. What? I knew that was, honestly, I thought that's what she was going to do the first time. No words. She half explained something about her daughter starving to death as she was walking away with the stranger's food. But unsurprisingly, that wasn't convincing enough for them. The old lady she took it from followed her right to our table and tried to get it back. <laughs> Bro, this mother-in-law and this old lady are about to just get in a full out bra. Come here, my tater, sonny. <laughs> Throwing haymakers left and right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was already searching for my coat tag in preparation to go, but a shoving match was beginning to unfold between mother in law and an elderly woman with a tennis ball walker. <laughs> that is, that is no. so crazy. Tennis ball oh my walker. God. How'd they let her in there? Bro. Bro has a coat tag. And they let a grandma Bro. with the tennis ball walker in? Granny, Granny is really about that action, dude. I really want to have that energy when I'm old. <laughs> And far be it from me to sit through all that had happened only to leave just right as the night was getting interesting. The elderly woman was like, give me back my potatoes. Who are you? And the poor little girl was like, mommy, it's okay. Don't take someone else's potatoes. When your six year old is telling you how to behave, there is something drastically wrong, <laughs> drastically wrong. But it all fell on deaf ears. Mother-in-law yelled at the old lady. How could you sit there and eat these when my daughter hadn't even been served yet? She's sitting here hungry, just a little girl. And you're over there stuffing your face. Come on, <laughs> other potatoes will be ready any minute. And the old lady got to love her. It was like, great. If they'll be out any minute, then what's the effing problem? <laughs> Is, wow, dude. This old lady is my bro. Bro, can you put Granny as my hero in the comments right now? Like, to which mother in law still found holier than thou ground, gasping, language, please. Finally, the waiter, and this time someone higher up as well, I think the manager, thank God, came over to separate them as they had begun to raise their voices and cause a disturbance. The staff had already asked mother-in-law to turn her daughter's iPad down multiple times without heed. And I'm guessing the waiter informed management about the tip on the table stunt that she pulled because this was their final straw. They told us we were going to have to leave the restaurant. You know what it would have... What would have been really funny, well, not funny, but terrible is if they like caused all that commotion. And then at the end of the dinner, if they had like made it all the way, the entitled mother was like, I didn't like my steak. We're not paying. Oh, dude. I didn't like the food. But we haven't even gotten our food yet, mother-in-law complained at the guy. This was clearly not the manager's first rodeo. You could take the food that's already been served free of charge. Everything else will be canceled. Please leave immediately. Ooh. The old lady didn't miss her chance to knock the potatoes right onto the floor so we couldn't try to take them with us. <laughs> she 
Billy's my hero. <laughs> Nothing else had been served yet, so we had to leave without any food. When my girlfriend and I were finally alone in our car, she said, can you believe that? And I said, not at all. And I really can't believe you didn't warn me. And she went, how could I have known about any of that? And confused, I was like, is she not usually like that? Even more confused than me, my girlfriend goes, who? Uh, your mom. What's my mom got to do with the terrible service at that place? No. No! She's her mother's daughter. That was the beginning of the end of our relationship. The fact that she didn't see anything wrong with her mom's behavior and that I'd be marrying into that situation shook me deep. We both dodged a bullet in more ways than one. In hindsight, we weren't right for each other, regardless of who her family was. Her mom saved both of us a lot of time and headache, helping me realize in one night what would have possibly taken us years otherwise. Within a month, we'd moved into separate apartments and gone on a break that ended up lasting forever. I'm not sorry I won't see you again, mother-in-law. I am sorry any wait staff ever will though. <sighs> oh my gosh. That's tough. That is so tough. I guess the question is, he has known this woman, you know, for some period of time. They're engaged, okay? So let's yeah. assume at least a year. All that time, do you not give her another chance? That's the question. Do you not give her the chance to see if she's not the mother-in-law? It was the the last comment she made for me. That was the straw. That, like, was, the, that was the final nail in the coffin. Because what I look at is whenever I see, like, a, a potential mate's parents is, like, their parents are basically envisioning what they want themselves to be what like me if i was a dad i want my son to be like me but better yeah and then if their parents are looking like that like that's the bar that's the bar she's had her whole life like i don't yep. I, honestly if that's how the fam if she would have said like i'm so sorry or like try to apologize that would maybe give me like some like okay maybe we can work something out but yeah. if there was like like she was basically agreeing with the mother dude I, don't, I really over. do not think there's another chance. There, There is no way that's another chance. What do you think? Could there be another chance? I think OP probably just missed a lot of red flags earlier in the relationship. I think that's what it is. But who knows best? Our beautiful audience, guys, comment down below. What do you think? Uh, should OP have given her another chance after that night, after the true colors were revealed? But Riley, I think we got another story for the beautiful people. <sighs> Please give it to me. Evil mother got me fired because I'm too fat. Then she gives the job to her daughter. Wow. You know, I, I thought we just had an evil mom, you know, but may maybe we have someone coming for the throne. This is the this is the game of thrones of evil mom. We got potato stealing <laughs> mother and then fat shaming evil mother. So, dude, who's going to win? I got my money on the potato, mom. All right, well, let's see. Let's see if we got one crazier. <laughs> I'm female and home from college. The stay at home order in my town is slowly being lifted. So some businesses are finally opening up. My parents require me to have a summer job. I'm blessed enough that I get to keep all the money I earn. My parents just like me to work to gain experience. This will be relevant later, but I am not a skinny girl. I wouldn't consider myself large either. I'm 5'6 and weigh about 140 to 145 pounds right now and carry most of it in my hips and thighs. The freshman 15 did hit me hard though, as I used to be around 120 pounds. So today, after finishing my last online final, my dad called me. He told me that one of his friends who runs a company texted him that they were looking for girls to work in the office, answering phones and stuff. Damn, <laughs> girls, <laughs> like Loki, Loki sexist, what the hell? I got excited because because that's exactly what I wanted. So I put on a dress, printed a copy of my resume, and I wrote down. The ladies inside were super nice and asked me to fill out an application. So I sat down to do so. This is where entitled mom enters. We're in the South, which might be relevant because typically for jobs like this, they're looking for a pretty face to sit behind the counter and talk to customers. Dude, that's so true. That's so true around here. <laughs> This is unspoken though. Yes, it's awful, but hey, I needed a job. So as I'm filling out an application, Entitled Mom enters with Entitled Kid. She announces that she's here about the opening and her daughter would like to apply. Desk Lady 1 explains that she'll need to fill out an application and hands her one and a pen. They come sit in the lobby right beside me, which I thought was weird, but I didn't say anything. Entitled Mom to me, are you here for this job as well? Uh, yes, ma'am. Hmm. You know, that little cocky sound that people make? That one. 
I ignored her and went up to ask Desk Lady One a question about the application. It was about how professional one of my references for babysitting was. When I returned and sat back down, Entitled Mom walked up to the desk. Entitled Mom. Does my daughter really need to fill this out? Desk Lady One. Uh, it's protocol. The boss will look at all the applications and decide who to call to interview. Is he here? I'm sure if he could see my daughter, he'd know who he wanted to call. Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> Gotta love a, a laugh after that. <laughs> Desk Lady One. Um, he is, but isn't seeing visitors right now. How will he know who to hire if he doesn't know what the girls look like? Uh. Well, he will need to see their references and make a few calls before he... No, my daughter is an aspiring model. She won the local pageant in 2019. He needs to see her to know she's the face he wants to see behind the counter interacting with customers. Beauty over brains. Uh, <laughs> right? Bro. Well, hey, this mom might be butt ugly. We don't, we don't know. <laughs> the, da the daughter's the one that's winning the pageants. Desk lady one. I'm not sure what you mean. <laughs> this isn't a modeling job. Looks really don't matter. Oh, I know, but they do. And let's face it. The boss isn't going to want, at this point, she leans closer to the desk lady, uh, a chubby girl <gasps> up here. Is she? No. Right in front of her wow. face. I mean, at least, well... <sighs> She didn't do it. In basically. Front of yeah. Basically. Basically. The old time, the entitled girl is smirking at me in glances as she fills out her application. This caught the attention of Desk Lady 2. And we both looked up at this point. Desk Lady 2. Ma'am, I'm not sure I know what you mean. Entitled mom. Oh, no disrespect. I know boss personally and know he'd prefer a new pretty face around the office. Maybe I'm a little biased, but I think there's no question between my daughter and, well, this young lady, for example, pointing at me. No offense, honey. Just trying to save you some time. Wow. What? I don't know if it was the rage or the sting of her insults, but either way, I was not going to let her see me cry, so I quickly got up and handed my application to Desk Lady 1 trying to leave. Desk Lady 2, who's also a plus-size woman. Sweetie, wait. You say you know boss personally, right? Talking to Entitled Mother. Uh, oh yes, we went to high school together. And you know him so well that you know he'd prefer a skinny woman behind this desk. Entitled mother. Well, I didn't say that. She did. But I'd assume so. This lady too. Great. Well, I'm his wife. And I've worked behind this desk for almost 15 years now. And as you can see, I could probably drop a few. And I take personal offense to what you're saying about my husband and this young lady. So I'd like you to wait in the car while your daughter fills out her application. Yo. Got her. Entitled mom and entitled girl both stormed out at this point. Entitled girl took her application, so I don't know if she'll apply or not. But both women behind the counter told me that entitled mother was a B and they'd vouch for me with the boss. So I'm hopeful that I got the job. And there are some quick updates here. But Riley, what do we think is going to happen? Dude, another bullet dodged. I mean, if the mom's acting like that, the daughter's going to be like that. Monkey see, monkey do. Simple as that. That's just what's going to happen. And just like, God, it's it's so sad that the, you know, maybe the girl in the last story, she was just young enough to like understand at the most basic human level, like, oh, don't steal mashed potatoes from this grandma. Like, I'm it's OK. I'm not hungry. <laughs> but then after like 16 years of conditioning, you know, this new in this in this story, she, she's gone. Yeah. You know, she's got her under her entitled Karen Talons. There's no saving her. All right, let's get into these updates. Oh my goodness, you guys are so kind. Thank you everyone for the awards and the compliments. I am so overwhelmed. You've all made my little heart so happy. A lot of you want to know if I got the job. Today I went in for an interview and I just got home from that. It went well and I'm hoping for a call soon and I'll update you when I know. Update number two. Hey guys, so I haven't gotten a call or anything. I'm starting to think maybe they wanted someone long term and not just someone from the summer. Sorry to disappoint y'all, but if they do, call me i'll be sure to update i was so sure we were gonna get the happy ending we wanted that's oh, tough. what a cliffhanger to leave off on that's so tough but 
all in all, I mean, you just got to love karma. You yeah. know what I mean? It's such a sweet and beautiful forest. Mama Karma rolled in here and smacked Entitled Mom and her kid right in the face with a dose of reality. Uh, shout out to the desk lady number two who was here to defend. Low key, d desk lady number one look a little sus. <laughs> Um, my question is, what would you do in this scenario of someone literally publicly insulting you just so blatantly, obviously, you know what I mean? Like, what what, what do you do in that scenario? I think you got to go like tennis ball granny and just like throw <laughs> your freaking your your gnarled hands, you know just what I'm saying? Your arthritis riddled fist. Just 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 <laughs> scrap, bro. Just absolutely throw <laughs> down. I think that's my answer. If someone came up to me. And was like, you're not pretty enough for the job. First off, I'm going to laugh. I was going to be like, ha, ha, ha. And then like, I'd probably like get after him and be like, what do you mean by that? What do you mean you're not pretty enough for this? And then just yeah. like really like dig into it and then make them cry. Because if someone tries to make me awkward, I awkward shift it onto them. Ooh. And then they feel awkward. And that's on them. Like me, can't, can't rattle me, you know? Hey, Riley, I, I do have to tell you something. Uh-oh. You're too pretty for this job. Too pretty for this job? Because you're too damn beautiful. Oh. Got him. Uh, but you know what else we got, Riley? What do you got? Another story. Bah, 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 bah. Karen parents are forcing me to abandon my boyfriend of six years. It's not my boyfriend all abandoned. So who is she going to abandon then? Everyone else in her life. She's going to run away and only have her boyfriend with her, her veterinarian, her doctor, her dentist. Everybody's getting abandoned except for the boyfriend. Wow. He's going to have to juggle a lot of hats if that's the case. I'll try to make a long story short. I am an only child and my current boyfriend and I have been dating for six years starting when I was 19 and when he was 20. We met at a junior college where we started dating and after that we went to different UCs but within an hour of each other. Interesting. So they went to different uh, universities of California, mm. I believe. Oh, nice. Which <laughs> is where your boy went for one quarter. <laughs> <laughs> My parents met him early on by joining us at dinner. Everything seemed to go well. Then, soon after, we went to his parents' house, who live about two hours from my parents, so I could meet his family. And after learning this, my mom told me how hurt she was that we didn't come back to see them too after they had met together the first time. I expressed that this weekend was just for me to meet his family, but it was clear that she felt almost betrayed by me. You got your visit, mom. Yeah. Fast forward. My parents invite me to our cabin and my boyfriend joins. We take my car because it was already loaded with laundry, etc. And after we arrive, my dad pulls me aside and pretty much quietly yells at me how wrong it is that I drove and that we took my car. He's the man. He should be driving. Blah, 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 blah. What? Your own... Bro, it's, it's one thing to be a freaking sexist asshole, <laughs> but to your own daughter? Like, come on. Like... <laughs> This started everything going forward on a sour note. The cabin is in Tahoe. It gets cold in the winter. So my boyfriend wore a sweatshirt with his hood up during some of the time at the cabin. My parents to this day cite this as weird and rude as well as a reason that they don't like him. Was he being weird in the sweatshirt too? Or was he just like vibing like... <laughs> was he like trying to like rob him? Just like scoping out the place, but like on the inside, like this is an inside <laughs> job. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta have the hood up to, just in case I decide to turn around and freaking rob these fools was he like levitating on the floor like his feet weren't touching the ground like what was he doing is he a dementor like is he trying to suck their souls out of their bodies what's going on here as we continue our relationship it's clear that my parents don't like him but they can't really give what i would call good or justifiable reasons they'll say he's just not a good fit for the family they don't tell me to stop dating him because they can't i'm an adult but they do tell me that I need to keep them and him separate. They don't want to really hear about him and he's not welcome at their house or cabin. He's never cheated on me, abused me. He has no drug problems, etc., etc. Nothing that a normal parent would cite as a problem. Eventually, it became an ultimatum given to me by my parents. They would tell me that if you continue to date him, eventually, it will be him or us, and you will have to choose. Yikes. Dude. It's usually the boyfriend that does that, not the parents. Right? <laughs> I just want to know, like, what did he do wrong? Like, did he, like, not close the cabinet door or, like... Riley, 
He wore a hoodie. I forgot. How, how could you possibly imagine the, the the horror? I mean, they turn around and instead of seeing, you know, uh, a human's kind face greeting them, they are blocked by a wall of cloth. Disgusting. Um, I, I, I guess I can't relate. Unforgivable behavior. <laughs> Among other things, they would tell me that he'd never be an attorney, which is what he wanted to do. He's a lawyer? <laughs> Parents are fumbling the bag. And they insinuated that he probably wouldn't be much of anything at all. That is like the most like stereotypical like path to success on <laughs> planet Earth. That is the most tried and it's like doctor, engineer, lawyer. Like those are the three. After undergrad, I started working at a financial firm. He graduated from an undergrad at UC Berkeley and was accepted to law school across the country. Okay, this guy is going places. It's making it happen. We were always very serious about each other and made the decision to do the long distance until he graduated and moved back to California. My boyfriend has since graduated from law school, moved home, and took the bar last month. He starts work this October and had a contract since last year. They have known about this as well. He's taking all the steps and, and, and making, making those moves. Now, six years into our relationship, I call my parents and tell them that we are going to be moving in together. About 20 minutes later, I got a text from my mom saying that she didn't want to rain on my parade, but that this path excludes her and my dad from my future. That they love me, but they can't be in my life if I choose to be with my boyfriend. <laughs> Sorry. He wore a hoodie. Sorry, I can't just look at you with this lawyer and your beautiful family, you know, being financially supported very well. I, I just can't look at it. I can't deal with it. You know what? You're you, Now you're too focused on money. <laughs> you need to stop being so greedy. Okay. I told them that I would never understand. Since then, they have sent me more and more text messages saying stuff like, we feel like we're losing our daughter. This is heartbreaking, etc. And all at the same time, including this, that it's my choice and my fault. I texted my parents that I thought my boyfriend and I should come over and talk. That texting about this kind of thing is stupid, but not to be patronized or belittled. And if it turned into screaming, then we would leave. My parents then replied that they wanted to see me face to face to talk, but that my boyfriend isn't allowed. We're going to zip him out of our lives. <laughs> anyway, he zipped us out of his. <laughs> My boyfriend even called my father the night of the initial we can't be in your life text to try to talk or meet up and see if there was a way to talk through any legitimate concerns. My dad did not answer and respond until a week plus later, only to text him that they never really ever liked him and that he wants to work through it with me alone and it's mine and my boyfriend's fault for not trying to address things earlier. What? You know, you could have taken off the hoodie. <laughs> Years ago, among other ridiculous reasons to not like my boyfriend were Berkeley isn't a man's college from my dad. One time in college, my professor lost my final exam. And when I found out via my final grades and was frantically calling her to figure out what had happened, my parents told my boyfriend, see, this is why we didn't want her to have a boyfriend in college. They found ways to blame him for everything. <laughs> Why did you force her professor to not send her her grades on time? <laughs> the only thing that ever had any merit was that he wasn't working yet. Well, this was because he was going to school to become a lawyer. <laughs> A perfectly reasonable excuse. Apparently, marrying someone who makes a lot of money is a bad thing, question mark? My boyfriend is the nicest, most calm, and peaceful person ever, and he loves me more than anything. But apparently their pride is more important than being wrong and just accepting him. I guess I'm just trying to figure out if this is normal or if it's as wrong as it feels to my boyfriend and I. Boyfriend, as well as my parents and myself, are of the same race, somewhat of the same financial status as well. No important details were left out, I promise. And I wanted to give objective feedback. Please believe me, if there was more, my parents would make it known to me and I would have included it in this post. Riley, we have a big fat update that we are staring down the barrel of. There's but more. We, we, have to, we have to stop. We have to take a pit stop right here. What's going on? <laughs> Dude, I, I hate to be this way, but this is pretty real for me. My ex-relationship 
their parents didn't like me and this had a lot of like the same kind of thing was going on and just like all these expectations i was like 20 maybe 19 <laughs> and like i was just going through school like i didn't know what i wanted to do really and i was like figuring it out but dude r.i.p to this bro like Oh, jokes on their parents because you just became the producer of the hottest new podcast in the game. Maybe they're afraid that the boyfriend is going to come between them. I could see if he was like abusing substances. That is a whole g infinite galaxy away from where we are right now yeah. from a soon to be lawyer, sweet, nice man. The math ain't mathin. It's really not mathin. But... There's one thing that we can add to this equation, Riley. Oh, you got something for me? The update. <laughs> Ooh, give it to me. After many hurtful texts from my parents that said that they can't accept my partner and that it doesn't really matter if it's a good fit for me, if he's not a good fit for my family, then it's never going to work. I went over in person to meet with them and pick up my legal documents. They made it clear that my boyfriend was not welcome and that this was a family matter. They needed to speak with only me about it. Clear manipulation, obviously. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I went alone. I'm on my way and I know what I think and how I feel. I'm very sure of what I plan on saying. Thanks to Reddit, I have additional confirmation that I'm not crazy or a wrong or bad person here, but they are in fact in the wrong. Yes. It was strange walking into your parents' house and feeling like you're meeting strangers kind of felt like having a 26 year long relationship and being broken up with via text, then having to go pick up your crap and memories from your ex's house, except that ex is your parents. Oh. <laughs> it's over. It's over, Riley. What? They are done. That's like all you've ever known, just like gone, you know? Imagine breaking up with your own parents. <sighs> After about an hour of small talk, we got into the nitty gritty convo about the elephant in the room. A previous text that week had said, we don't expect to change your mind. We just wanted to talk. But it's clear that this in-person meeting was a last ditch attempt to shake me from my reality and into theirs. They came at me from every angle. He's not a man's man, dad said. I don't respect him. I hate him. <laughs> He's taking me away from the most precious thing in our life. How could you not hate someone like that? It's not a lumberjack. A real man would wear a tank top in a icy tundra of Tahoe, <laughs> not a jacket like a little... <laughs> Even at some points, my dad was physically threatening him. My mom was either agreeing or adding little tidbits and reminders of things that she doesn't like about him. Some of which are things I mentioned in my previous posts about when I want to meet his family and didn't see her and my dad too. Mentioning also that she doesn't like that I made the first move to talk to my boyfriend and not the other way around. It was an all out war on my boyfriend. They tell me I'm depriving them of a son-in-law. They say he is selfish for not breaking up with me years ago when he realized that my parents didn't like him. How are they depriving him of a son-in-law when he literally is the son-in-law? <laughs> they even just started blindly throwing out shots like, I don't even know if he has any friends. Like, WTF mom and dad, of course you don't know crap about him because you've made me keep my relationship out of earshot for six years. But I digress. It ends up being a three hour long conversation where I spoke for all of about five minutes with my heart rate at 150 the whole time. Thanks for reminding me, Apple Watch. Resident Riley, what, how, how bad is 150? Is that, that's super high, right? It's like basically doing CrossFit for three hours, like, yeah. Oh like, my God. Like a CrossFit workout's like 160, 170 beats per minute. And 150 is like, if you're running, I would say if you're running. Jeez. They also don't fail to mention a few other shining points, such as we knew you would put this on us, that this is not an ultimatum. We are just reacting to your choices and decisions, was their reply to me saying, this is not my choice. This is an ultimatum you've given me and neither my boyfriend or I want this. We knew you would make us the bad guys because we're not. Hashtag team boyfriend. Any of your friends and family who say we will not come around or it will get better is lying to you 
and saying what you want to hear. They asked me why they should like or be impressed by my boyfriend. I told them various accolades and dad just replied with, education doesn't impress me. <laughs> I told them how wonderful he was through some of the toughest times in my life, college, and how he supported and kept me sane when even my parents were coming down on me about how I wasn't doing enough. They said, that's what any boyfriend would do. Um, no mom and dad, it's not. And the two of you were certainly making me feel worse that entire time. They said because my boyfriend's dad helped him get through school by paying his tuition that he's had everything in life handed to him. I don't want no silver spoon raising my grandbabies. Dad said, I think your mom is having an epiphany about who you're becoming, like I'm some monster. They said, we feel like you're not listening to us because I'm not just blindly agreeing to break up with my <laughs> boyfriend. And dad said, this kind of thing happens all the time as if it makes it normal or justified. At the end, I have to break the news that in between all of the hurtful texts and prior to this meeting, my boyfriend and I signed a lease and are moved in together. Nothing they were going to say was going to sway me otherwise. Even and they said that. So we had taken the leap and made the move the weekend before this meeting. I commuted about 20 to 30 minutes before the move and my commute is the same after the move. Only difference is we now live in the same city that my boyfriend, now a new attorney with crazy early and late hours. Believe me, I had all kinds of requirements prior to this move. It has to be safe, have an in-unit washer and dryer, safe parking, etc., etc. And it's only for a year or two while we save money so we can buy a home. Contrary to my parents' belief, I am capable of rational decisions. Opie seems like the most like normal, rational person on planet Earth. I told them first that we signed the lease and where it is, you know, to try and lighten the blow that I'm outright disobeying them. They start going off about how, oh, of course, making it easy on him again. They saw me always going to my boyfriend's house as me catering to him, even though the only reason was because we were never comfortable being together at their house. Then, of course, he became essentially banished. <laughs> Riley, there's a perfectly reasonable solution to all this. If you want to hang out with your boyfriend, he, you two just have to sit on the sidewalk outside of our house without walking through the door and you can be together that way. The only way, I guess. So they see this move as me being some smitten teenage idiot, not about how this is a relationship with compromise. They tell me that my commute is going to be brutal and that I'm lying to myself if I think it's not. Again, I have already been doing it for a week. I know it's not any worse. It's a prettier drive even, but it's clear that I can't slowly ease into it and I just have to rip off the Band-Aid because they are straight up just wrong in trying to convince me that I don't know what I'm talking about. So I say, we've already been doing it for a week. We moved in last weekend. Ooh. Riley, if they didn't like a hoodie, they're gonna love the fact that they moved in together without telling them. <laughs> They're going to be like, you know what? Forget about this whole hoodie thing. You're right. Congratulations. Congrats. Let's open a bottle of champagne and have a little housewarming for this you. This was all a test. This is all a test. What do you think the reaction is going to be? Real quick. Real quick prediction. Everyone in the comments right now. What do you think they're going to say? I just think like they're going to lay into it even more and try to do whatever they can possibly to get her to get out of it. But like she can't. What, what do you think? Like cancel your lease. <laughs> They are just dumbfounded, lol. Like, I thought you guys said you weren't planning on changing my mind, so why so surprised that I went ahead with my choice? My mom starts crying. My dad keeps saying, oh, yeah, effed up, kid. It's about 10 p.m. at this point, so now that they know I have a slightly longer drive home, they are kind of sweeping me out the door so I can get home before it gets too much later. My mom gives me this big sobbing hug. At this point, I've run out of tears. I was crying throughout the entire conversation, oh. but at this point was just over the BS. Which you should be! My dad, who rarely even tells me that he loves me, gives me this awkward, desperate hug that just kind of makes me roll my eyes. I get in the car, and drive home just totally exhausted and confused. Truthfully, they did a good job of again, making me question my own thoughts and choices. But I got home and just start spilling everything they said to my boyfriend. He's not surprised, but as I said in my last post, he remains Swiss as in neutral as freak in all of this and doesn't say anything crappy about them. My boy is a good one. Damn. I don't know if I'd be uh, so generous. No, I'd definitely be dropping some jokes or something. He just holds me close and lets me vent. <laughs>
He's a keeper. He's a keeper. Something else that came up during our lovely three-hour discussion was my anxiety. I previously shared with them that I think they are a huge source of it and had been throughout my childhood as well. Prior discussions have always gone nowhere. You had it so easy. We don't ask that much of you, et cetera, et cetera. So I brought it up again in this discussion, how my parents are a huge source of anxiety and my boyfriend is a calm rock in all of it, that I'm so grateful that he's such a great partner. My dad screams at me how he never laid an effing hand on me and how he was physically disciplined as a child and he just can't own that they could have had anything to do with me being an anxious person. Yeah, I, I, I didn't beat you as a child. Give me the parent of the century award, please. Physical abuse um, and emotional abuse are not the same. Come on. He even says, you need effing therapy. Like, yes, dad. Thank you. I sure do. And also, F you. Also, I said, I had a hard time swallowing that I had anything to do with your anxiety. You're going to have to work out those demons with yourself. All of this to say, the answer you've all waited for is that I have moved in with my boyfriend. I'm keeping my mom and dad at arm's length and also, I have started therapy. It's 26 years of emotional abuse and narcissism to unpack and learn from, but I'm working through it. Hey, congratulations, OP. That I, I am truly happy you've broken out of their freaking messed up matrix. So that is, that is awesome news. The guilt tripping and lack of boundaries is so real and has been real for forever. I know my situation isn't as bad as others and is also worse than others, but for all of you out there in similar situations, seek therapy. It is really a good thing. There's so much behavior to unlearn and grow from. Even if you don't think it's bad and that you're doing fine, see a therapist if you can. Your abusers have learned behavior too. They have learned how to get you and how to manipulate you, whether it's vindictive or not. They have learned how to make you do what they want and think what they think, and then they know how to make you feel horrible about doing anything differently. Seek counsel and family and friends whose advice you trust, seek therapy, and above all, trust yourself. I still get very emotional about all of this. It's still a very fresh wound. I mourn the relationship I had with my mom and the one I will never have with my dad. My health is definitely suffering at the moment from all of the stress, but I'm working on getting my mental health back and I know my body will follow. Breaking the wheel is hard and terrifying. It's like being a crate trained puppy forever and finally being allowed to go outside, but outside is unknown. The crate is all you know, and even though you know the crate is confining and freedom is in front of you, it's all so unfamiliar, uncertain, and frightening. You know what's behind you and it's easy to want to run back to it, but no matter what is in front of you, it's better than the crate. The crate is not living for yourself, living for someone else. So go out and make your own life. Oh my God, hold on. Ooh. Jeez, another freaking round of applause. Ha, oh, OP. Wow. I'm proud of you, OP. That she saw through all that and she like still stayed like focused and didn't like veer off to what they said. That, that takes a lot of courage. Shout out to OP. I think mm -hmm. she really like broke through all the noise, seeking therapy, figuring out for herself uh, what, what she wants and kind of like building and work, going into the unknown, like she said, with the boyfriend. And they're probably going to have an incredible, successful relationship. I mean, he's literally a freaking lawyer from UC Berkeley. Like, what, 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 are, we, what are we even what else, talking about here? What else more do you want? I guess lesson of the day is uh, if your if your parents don't like hoodies, just just cut and run, man. Just 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 end it. Cut it out. Get out of there. But you know what I don't want to get out of, Riley. What's that? This episode because we have one final story for y'all. <laughs> my mom lied and let me believe my cat was missing for two months. I am furious at her. Am I the a hole? This one it was submitted to r slash OKOP show, baby. Who did it? Big shout out to Yobi2000, aka Lil Udon. Thanks for sending in a story again. Actually, Riley, if, if they want to submit a story, where can they send it in? Oh, if you would want to submit a story, please go to r slash OKOP show. Put in that nice title. Put in those words and we will read it because I read every single one of them. That's right. R Riley is the gatekeeper. He is the man that will decide if a story gets on this podcast. Make me laugh and I'll put you on here. You can even call us 
and or slash text us your number and be like, hey, what's good? And what is that number, John? 440-508-6567. Without further ado, let's get into the story. Lil Udon here. What's up? Good to see you again. Sigh. I cannot seem to catch a break. Mm -hmm. Around two months ago, my fluffy cat, Cashew, great name, went missing, or so I thought. I assumed he had gotten through a hole in my mom's floor, and I've spent the last two months calling out for him, (laughs) hoping he would come back. What? A hole in the floor. A hole in the floor, Riley. He's gone. I would come into my mom's room late at night and cry that I had failed him and wondering if I was just a bad cat mom. About a month and a half ago, I got more worried because we got the hole fixed. My oldest cat, two plus years old, is a male cat named Chiron, also got out. And I found Mm. him in our yard right next to the house, gone. He had been poisoned by a neighbor down the street who began to leave out a bowl of water with rat poison in it to (gasps) keep the strays out of his trash. Oh, dude. Oh, my God. God, losing Chiron devastated me and I spent a day crying on my mom's bed that I had failed to protect my babies and that I didn't deserve my cats. I repeatedly questioned if I should surrender my other cats to a shelter, but ultimately did not because one of them is brain damaged and three of them are black cats, so they would not do well in a Mm. shelter. My mom never said a word to me until today. For contact, about two and a half months ago, a couple incidents occurred. And long story short, my older biological sister is legally not allowed to be less than a hundred feet away from me, nor is she allowed to contact. Oh my goodness. Well, little Udon, if you want to ever share that with us, you know where to reach us. However, she had been holding some of my stuff hostage in her trunk until I agreed to pay for half of a storage unit I had zero legal claim to. She and my youngest biological sister dropped the stuff off while I was at work and went to get some of my older biological sister's things, which technically means she can't come back because the judge banned her from my mom's property for two years aside from the one day she had to collect her stuff. Yes, what she did to me was that bad. Apparently, when they went to collect older sister's things, younger sister saw Cashew and wanted him. Oh my God. Put ICU if you Mm. see what is about to go down in the comments right now. They both made my mom promise not to tell me and my mom let them take him. Oh my God. I only found out today because their mother wanted him gone and my mom felt a shred of guilt. She says she did nothing wrong because she couldn't stop them, but she snapped at me when I told her she could have told me sooner. First of all, yes, you could have stopped him. You could have been like, no, that's not your cat. And no, I'm not going to lie to OP about it, Yeah, you know, and B, you could have told her at least be like your sister's took your cat. You can't have a delay in message with this kind of stuff. She says she never lied to me, but I told her she let me believe he was missing or dead even after seeing what losing Chiron did to me. She told me that she made her promise and I snapped at her. What kind of monster are you that you would let me believe my cat was dead after you let them take him because you promised them you wouldn't tell me? Am I that unimportant to you and that my tears and my pain mean nothing to you? When I finally got back to him, she went, Are you happy now? And I said, how could I possibly be happy that I'm living with such a lying, empathic snake? She told me to shove my animosity up my ass and I told her to go to hell. I do not have the money to move out right now. And this is currently the only place I am legally safe for my older sister for the next 21 months. She knows this and has told me if I want to stay, I need to shut my mouth and leave her alone about it. My only option is to bite my tongue until I can get enough money to move far away where neither her or older sister can reach me and not let either of them know where I am. I feel so hurt and betrayed and the way my autism affects me, it feels like I can't process any of it at once. It keeps hitting me in waves and I don't know how to feel. She is providing me shelter and not charging me rent until I get on my feet. But I feel like what I don't pay in money I pay for with my mental health. She's hurt me in so many ways over time and recently, but this one just feels like a dull, rusted knife through my heart, and I don't know how to move past it. Oh, dude. Well, Udon, you are part of the OK fam. Let's let's get some some hearts in the comments and maybe just take a second to write a, a sweet, thoughtful message to to little Udon and show our love. I am so sorry that you're going through this, little Udon. You know, I think 
even though your mom is giving you a place to stay and is like, you know, not charging you rent or whatever. I think this can often be done as a means of like having something to hold over you. You know what I mean? And it's like, hey, I don't make you pay rent. I'm doing all this stuff for you. Blah, 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 blah. You know, you should, you know, listen to me. Let me do what I want, et cetera, et cetera. Um, But you definitely don't deserve that behavior. And yes, I think you're right. Your mom is almost like making you pay for it with all of this BS, especially after your first cat. My gosh, I am at least glad that she found the cat. Like it might be with a horrible person, but like it's still alive. We're sending all of our love to you. Hope to hear from you again. I know, I know, I know, little Udon, you've sent in some stories in the past. Hoping things turn around. Maybe try some cat content. Who knows? And if any of you watching want to submit a story of your own, head over to r slash OKOP show. We would love to hear from you. Love to share some advice. Or if you just want to hear us read your story because we love doing it, big, big old Riley will lift up that big rusty gate and let you in. I promise. And if you want to call us, you can call us at 440-508-6567. Love you, Lil Udon. Love you, every single one watching this, including Riley. And we'll see you next time. Love you too.